What's the dish, your boy LaPan, the building big head for the hit machine? Right now, I'm in here with Real Life Street Stars. Turn it all the way up. Make sure you go check out this interview. Hey, it's lit. We had a lot of things to talk about. Real life street star, man. We in the hill with the motherfucking power. Oh. Man, that nigga done stole genuine song. How you? <laughs> how the fuck did you do it? I ain't still that man. So. How you do it? No, I'm, I'm just joking, man. He said I can bar. <laughs> <laughs> man, we in here, man, with LaPat, man. You right. going crazy on the radio. You got one of my favorite songs. I don't know where you pull Flo Millie out. I love Flo <laughs> Millie. She underrated in my she opinion. She killed that motherfucker, too. But man, you first time on the couch, man. We got to go through there. We gonna start from the beginning because everybody know you from the song "Let's Ride" with Flo Millie. Right. You feel my, what I'm saying? Um, so let's let's start from there, and then we are gonna go back and get the history on you. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, how did how did you Virginia Wine Pony? That's a classic, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, one of my old school partners actually challenged me to redo the song, so it was like a challenge for me. But uh, you know, I'm 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 the first grandchild in my family, so I grew up on all that good music. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Definitely. So you grew up on some genuine. Fact. Tell me which song got it done. Uh, it probably been. It probably would have been in those jeans. In those jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. probably been some around that around that time. Yeah, nah, for sure. Um, yeah, nineties R and B, bro. Like, man, I miss it. You know what Fact. I mean? It's uh, I love R and B now too, though. That, let, let's not get it twisted. It's different. But what was it about the nineties R and B for you that caught? Caught your attention, it caught your vibe. The emotion, the kind of like when they sung, they sung with more emotion. I like get it, it had sustenance. I mean, they 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 had topics, they had concept. You know what I mean? It was more of a performance. It wasn't just about a song. You know what I mean? So it was like real different. And I, I'm real careful with the things I write about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The way I structure my songs because of the times like that. You know what I mean? I'm, I still grew up on those structural basics. Nah, for sure, man. Like. If you were to go back in the like, you know, you you up now, you know what I'm saying? But if you were to make a song, I mean, you're probably gonna say genuine. Excluding genuine. Yeah. Who would you want to do a song with, you know what I mean, from the from the nineties? Cause me, I'm gonna go Jodeci. Um, I would love to hear what you and Jodeci would do. Jodeci. This is me personally, but what, what who I, would I, you I, I, I don't want with Drew Hill. Yeah, I I would I'm beautiful. They had to put me on that right there. Yeah, nah, legends for sure. Fact. So so talk to me, man. Like so. I was talking to my girl, right? And, um, you know, when I played the song, she was like, she learned about the song through TikTok. Fact. You know what I mean? Like? She was like, oh, man, they was making hella TikTok. And she yeah. like, for whatever reason, she's up on whatever's up on TikTok. She know what's, what's up, you know? Um, for you, is that what blew you? Or like, what, what do you think attributed your success to that song? Um, yeah, TikTok definitely, it kind of enhanced the song. Like, it, it gave, it, it gave a, a wider audience to hear the song. You know what I mean? Like, cause if it was just TikTok, it would have stayed on TikTok and died off on TikTok. Right. But it just gave people the opportunity to hear it. Like, like you say, if you're on TikTok, you'll hear what's in the end. Like, uh, what's her name? Taylor, that, that water song. Yeah, yeah, Tyler. I love that song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I heard it first on TikTok. But now I got it on my playlist. Now I want to hear it without seeing people dance to it. You feel me? I just want to hear the song. The song is like a naturally good song. Right. So yeah, TikTok definitely gave me that, that, that broad view. Even beyond that, right? Because I was, I asked a lot of people, where do you go to hear new music? Just in general, like, where do you go to hear new music? A lot of, for me, it was like the club, right? You yeah. The club, or you might put on a radio, niggas ain't putting on the radio and niggas ain't going to the club because it's crazy, right? Facts. So now I feel like TikTok is kind of where you go to hear like the new shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But in a more creative way, you feel what I'm saying? What is the last song that you heard and where did you hear it? You know what I'm saying? When you picked up your new music, where's the last song that you heard? Um, I'm gonna say, well, I guess with the label I was, I'm with, uh, they they promote a lot of artists, and I've been on Huncho lately, so it was just straight off of social media, seeing like you know his work ethic. You feel me? If you make so you being seen, we're gonna see it eventually. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like that's how it goes. If you you gonna be seen eventually, I gotta make sure I got a song that you gonna want to hear when that time comes. You know what I mean? So Rodeo just was that song for me that when whenever you heard it, it was like I like that song. Whether they even know what I look like. My name, they call me Lafet on, but they know the song. They genuinely like the song, so they're gonna go download it. Yeah. Feel me? So that's the whole end game for it for me, right? Uh, I always want them. I always, want, I want to be, you know, the biggest star, the biggest artist. I definitely want the world to to hear me sing. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad I can make music that they like. You know what I mean? It's cool if they be like, yeah, I like Lafet. Yeah, he be 
and they start naming drama, but they didn't right. mention none of these these superstar songs. They be yeah, I seen them on Bad Girls Club. I seen them on this and this and that, but. They don't know about their music. I want to be known for my music and my artistry, for sure. Nah, for sure. All right, so take me through when, you know, because, again, the song originally didn't have Flo Millie on Because nah, I heard Big it without J. her on there or whatever. Big J was the original. Right. Big J. Yeah, yeah, from Houston, right? Nah, she from Beaumont, but, oh, you she know, from, same yeah. area. Right, right, right. Uh, Yeah. So at what point did Flo Millie tap in? Because I feel like when she jumped on it, it took the song to another level. Facts. Room. It did, like, 10 times as hard. Uh, I, so after the TikTok blew up, which was the original song, I ended up getting signed at 300. You know what I mean? Oh, Celine Bob called and he was like, man, you know, would you do a remix? And I was like, yeah. He was like, well, who? And of course, young nigga out the ghetto, I started naming some of the biggest stars I know. Right. He was like, you know, you don't want to tap in with the, the upcoming. You don't want to tap in with the, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's easy to go, go get, you know what I'm saying? Somebody big, you know what I mean? But he was like, man, they got artists who slept on like how you right. said, right. you know what I mean? And he started, he gave me a list of artists to go listen to. And I had Big J, and to me, Big J is one of the hardest female rappers. You know Thanks. what I mean? She's I real aggressive. She can give you, you know what I mean? She's like a two-way street. She called. And she came on there on some real aggressive, dominant female shit. You know what I'm saying? So when I heard Flo Millie, she had this old boss chick sound to me. You feel me? And I feel like it was like a contrast. Like, I got the aggressive female side, right. and I got a boss prissy kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she real, real fly with it. Right. You know what I mean? And I feel like it just fitted so perfectly. Facts. Yeah. Nah, that's a that's a fact, bro. I love Flo. And Billy, they both man. from the south, so they good. both from the south, man. <laughs> Shout out to them. So you know when you're doing that, and then you see your song just going shooting up the charts, going crazy, bro. What is that feeling like? And what's the highest position that landed on the charts? Uh, twenty one on the Billboard. That's crazy. Facts. That's your first song. Well, that's not your first song, but I mean, nah, that's, but your, that's my first. The first song on three hundred. Charting, yeah, and uh, no, I, I hear number one on the radio, number one on TikTok, so. Right. I did some great things like that, but that Billboard was just different. It's different. Because I'm thinking like, yeah, once that album drop, I'm going to get on the Billboards and, oh, it's the, the first one. You feel me? Yeah, it was dream come true. Like, I literally watched every million view I made. Like, I watched it meal by meal. Every meal I got, I posted it. New one, new one. Start calling them Eminem's, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Facts. Yeah. That's what's up, man. So, so let's get into it, man. Um, where are you from, man? Cause like for me, right, I go through your channel and I see like five or six songs on there, and I go, okay, he cleaned it up. He yeah. probably wiped everything away. So right, so there's just probably a lot of people that don't really know your origin story, where you came from, how you got into the music, spitting the dope or R and B. Where are you from? I'm originally from New Orleans. I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. I moved to Houston like back in 2010. Uh, did some school out there. Well, I, I had moved to Houston during Katrina, but I was going back and forth. You know, I was a little bad kid, so my mama dragged me back and forth. But um, I spent a lot of time in Houston. I spent just half of my life in Houston that I did in New Orleans to where the city know, knew me. So, right. But they know I'm from New Orleans, but they're kind of like, but they from Houston. Houston. Nah, for sure. When you, we, yeah, if you, especially you get success. So, like, did you start doing music in Houston? How did it come? How did the, the musical part? Because New Orleans and Houston, them two musical cities. Yeah, So yeah, you yeah. can draw influence from both. So I, I, I sung in church when I was a kid in New Orleans. That's right. uh, I came home in 2018 and started doing music in Houston. I was going by OTH little Pat. Yeah. OTH meaning off the hustle. We had, like, a little group in the hood. Yeah. But, you know, as I got older and as I progressed in the music, I wanted to, you know, let them know who LaPat was. OTH is OTH and LaPat is LaPat. You know, I'm still a gang for life. You know what I mean? Big gang. But I wanted them to know who I was. So a lot of my earlier music is under OTH LaPat. Got you, got you. So let me ask you this. When, when you was in the group, were you rapping? Because, you know, as from yeah. the hood, you know, we all start off rapping now. I was on some street shit. Yeah. And I think that's what, what kind of was. Because I had some R&B songs, too, that had made top 20 on the Go DJ list. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to DJ High C. I had an R&B song called Voodoo and Kryptonite that did some nice work with them. But it was those songs that told me that, okay, I got a female fan base, so they don't want to hear this street shit all the right. time. You know what I mean? They, don't, they tired of hearing me talk about me and my partners on the block riding with the gang gang. You know what I mean? They, they, they want me to make them feel good. So that's what kind of like deterred my artistry. That's what made me want to take the OTH off my name because LaPat was more universal for me. You know what I'm saying? OTH LaPat is like NBA young boy. I just felt like it was already just set on some street shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now I feel like if I just went by LaPat, it can go either way. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's my name. Right. That's that's dope. So like, okay, when did you really tap into the singing, right? Cause uh, like you say, you're rapping with your partners. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, you know, you could do both. It was rodeo, ro- rodeo. Oh, definitely. so rodeo was the first one that made you say, Boom. I'm, "I'm done with street music." Got you. Oh, so this is recent. <laughs> so this is kind of recent. Then. I dropped. I dropped. The, I was dropping street songs right before I did rodeo, and and it was that. It was like I tell you, I was humming. A, I was humming a hook on live. I don't want to feel your body on top of mine. Girl, I was like, you need to make that a song. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Tell me about the time you use your singing ability for pure evil. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all the time. <laughs> Any chance I get? Nigga, low key trying to hit that up. Yeah, I had I to let him know. Did. I see what you did there. Now, uh, <laughs> I have to speak that in. <laughs> I see what you did. I gotta there. put that work in. They gotta know. They gotta know. No, it's real, it's, they, they always having a auto tune debate, and right. I let them know I sing. I sing from my heart. Like I'm saying, like I do this on a daily basis in the shower, in the kitchen. Yeah. I'm gonna sing every chance I get. I'm a rap too, but. Singing is just natural. Like, I can't rap without melody. You know what I'm saying? I can't just give you straight raw bars. Like, melody just comes out of me naturally. Right. What's the one gospel song that you lean on when you're trying to get, like, the spiritual girl? No weapon. <laughs> oh, I let her know. We're going to prosper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get the preacher dog after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's freaky because she's spiritual. <laughs> Nah, man. Um, so yeah, so so you're doing your thing. You put rodeo out, and damn. So when you put rodeo out, you was in Houston when you put it out. Yep. Damn. So who who was part of the team that helped you get to that? Was somebody made that beat, or was it already like it a- was DJ Payne, man? DJ Payne made it beat. He a real big producer. Damn. And yeah, we tapped in with him to get the beat done. Uh, it was magic. I called Jade up like, man, I need you. <laughs> And they they made it happen. That team made it happen. But I, it was just really at that time, like when I first first dropped it, it was really just me and my managers, like outside pushing it. I'm tapping it. My my way of doing it, I tapped in with all the DJs in Houston that I knew. I used the relationships I already had. Like okay, I got a record now. Y'all can play. Y'all can play it at prime time. I can play it at R&B nights. Y'all can play. It, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the Fourth of July, Kiati called my manager. Like, hey, you manage La Pat. He was like, yeah, he's like, man, we want to spin that on our, our little, you know, upcoming artist mixer on, on the radio. And he debuted it on the radio and phones rung off the hook. That's Went crazy. crazy. That's crazy because like, I always, always, when I get an R&B artist, I always ask him, what platforms do y'all use? Because there's a lot of platforms for rap artists, yeah, right? Yeah, it's not that what, many for R&B. Yeah, so what platforms do y'all use to get on? So you there just said you just hit it in their face. That's what you I mean. performed it everywhere in Houston. I performed it at baby showers, uh, fashion shows. <laughs> I swear to God, I swear to God, I perform this song everywhere. I don't Yo, care where. That's loud. Because that's the only way I can get them to hear me. And I, but I made sure it was always place where it was more women. Right. I had to make sure I'm performing places where I just going to be a nice female crowd. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never try to perform it on no gangster night. You know what I'm saying? But even, even when I did, though, still a show. You know what I'm saying? Because gangsters going to turn up the gangsters, but the women go crazy when they're pegging on stage. You feel me? That's, that's that's tell me about the difference between like you know you was a rap artist and yeah. now you're R&B. What's the difference like? I know you know you got the women crowd, but what's the difference between? I don't got that many women? niggas on stage with me. Oh okay, <laughs> before it was a hundred niggas. Facts. I still want to put back the game. Come on stage, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now it's kind of like like now it's, it's man. It feels sometimes it, it be I be nervous up stage by myself. You feel me? Like when you got your partners on stage, it's kind of like a. Honey hype man. It's like we in, on the block just rapping the song in the car, smoking. That's how it is when your partner's on stage. When you really up there, you gotta perform and you got these women like nigga don't disappoint me. That's a whole different kind of like stress that be putting on me. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I be <clears throat> trying to clear my throat up like, ooh, if I croak, she gonna talk about me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And when I mean she, I mean all of the women. Right. Cause they be looking, they be ready, and they be looking for a show. But if you if you rapping, it's kinda like just rap. Right. Rap turn up. Smoke a back one on stage, you good. You don't gotta do too much. So now you got Now you gotta ask me this, cause like you say, the rodeo shit is kind of recent. You still was rapping with niggas. So was there any like low key jealousy when you just went dolo on the singing tip, or everybody embraced it? Nah, it, it at first it was kind of weird, cause everybody's like, "What you, what you, you ain't, you ain't fucking with the gang? You took it off your name?" I'm like, "Nah," you know what I'm saying? I had to just realize that I, I ain't want to be a worker. I had to boss up. You know what I'm saying? And, I want to stand alone. I want to show that I can stand on my own feet. Like, we gang for life. You my brother forever. But I don't have to attach you to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you was a car dealership and I got, and I sell houses over here, that don't mean we don't fuck with each other. We just got two different businesses. And I want to separate that business from mine. 
Facts. And that's just really how I want to do it because I, you know what I mean? I, I, I got a show. I'm a boss in my own right, regardless. Man, that's, that's, man, say, bro, that's live, bro. Cause, um, you know, me scrolling down to YouTube. Cause, cause you know, naturally when you hear something that you like, you want to go and check out Facts. next nigga music. Facts. So I pull up Lil Fat for Christmas. I said, this nigga didn't drop the Christmas song. Yeah, but Lil Fat didn't. <laughs> you, you do the same thing that everybody else do. You call me Lil Fat. Lil Pat. Lil, Lil Pat, my bad. Lil Pat. I pull up the Christmas song and I yeah. said, this nigga to drop the Christmas song. Let me check Facts. it out. That bitch was jamming. It was a different kind of Christmas. It ain't even about no holidays. It's yeah. About just showing love and. Right. You know what I'm saying? This Christmas, I got a gift you can unwrap and it's me. Facts. Right. Right, I right. Feel. But I like the I like the song. Like the song was fired. I was like, damn, this is this is a cold song. You know what I mean? Like, what what went into that? Did you do that just knowing that Christmas is coming up? Let me give them a jingle, or you just like cause like you said, if you listen to the song. It is still like on yeah, your same it's vibe. vibe. It's still yeah. like R and B. You know, what I'm saying it's not just a Christmas song. You facts, know what I mean? Facts. It's something you can get down to, set the mood to. So for you, was that a conscious effort? Because I'm like, why don't more people make Christmas music? I always wanted that. I, I didn't want to make an actual Christmas record, but I want to make something for the holidays. I want to make something. You know, everything I be want to do, I be want to do it sexy. Like I want it to be well, it could be universal. You know what I'm saying? So when when Actually, Celine called me and was like, you know, you ever thought about doing a Christmas record? And I was like, Celine, I don't even celebrate the holidays like that. You know what I'm saying? He was like, nah, just try it. I linked in with Lace Mode and he was like, it'll be fire if you do a Christmas record, but do a La Pet Christmas record. Yeah. Don't do no jingle bells. Like, do something that you feel like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I wanted to do something that, that shows this is what La Pet Christmas would be like. Like, it ain't even about no Christmas tree. It's all about the vibes and the fact that it's cold. And I want to snuggle with you. We can wear matching PJs. We can make Christmas cookies. You know what I'm saying? But I'm the gift. Come and wrap me, baby. That's live, man. Fact. Man, shout out to you. Like, cause I, cause I just think, man, you're super talented, especially with the vocals, bro. Appreciate it. Um, Appreciate it. Is there anybody that helped you along the way as far as getting your sound right, or was that just something that just came natural to you? I used to mimic my aunt growing up. Like, you know what I mean? She used to lead in the choir. But I'm, I'm like a. Self-taught, like I didn't take no classes. I don't got no vocal coach. It's kind of like perfecting my own sound. Like, but like now, like I be willing to work with writers so I can, you know, find find different sounds that I can, you know, what I mean, I can master. I like to master crafts. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm a I'm a student of the game for sure. So for you, is there any like pressure? Because you got to certify Smash, bro. To for for that to be your first yeah. single out the gate, that's kind of tough to follow it up. You know what I mean? So for you, what's that plan like look like? Just keep pushing. Like, I, I don't feel like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not trying to match the song or, you know what I mean? I'm just really trying to create the songs I love and give out music that people love. Like, if, if, if Rodeo be my biggest song ever, yeah. hey, I'm okay with that. I had a big song. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm never going to quit and I'm never going to stop producing. I'm never going to stop giving the people what I got to give. You know what I'm saying? Does it does it feel fast for you? Because it feels like you just came out of nowhere, honestly. And it, yeah, it was. Boom. It's like you just on the radio. Like that yeah. doesn't typically happen like and that. And I didn't expect it, man. When I recorded Rodeo, I only wanted to get noticed. I only want the people to know, like, oh, we got somebody new in the game. And I was hoping that I follow up into boom. But hey, yeah. I'm doing a lot. Yeah, facts. So you out here? What do you have a show out here? Like what? What? Tell me about like now what you got going you got a big single are you on tour you know what are you i actually doing? just did my own tour uh the kamikaze tour which is my follow-up single mr hands on the head yeah. uh to, but tonight i got a show with genuine jagged edge uh trey songs all these big legends so i get the blazes out and i'm the only person <laughs> that has that that's on there that's not such a big star as them you know what i mean so i feel honored i really feel like the king right now Wait a minute, you got an actual song with Genuine? Have you talked to Genuine? No, about this song? so today will be my first day actually <laughs> meeting, bro. I talked to him on the phone before, like he okay. definitely gave me he his gave blessing me. for sure. But this will be the first day I get to shake his hand, like, and take a picture with him. And I ain't gonna lie, bro, it doesn't seem like Genuine just blessing niggas. So for him to bless your song, I mean, he had to fuck with it. Facts. So that had to feel good Facts. to be like, damn, Genuine. And he actually told me that. Like, he's like, man, I usually don't like people remixing my song. Say, so he what was did that amazing, King. What was that conversation like with Genuine? What did he tell you? Did he give you any advice? Did, like, what was the conversation? To me, I felt like he told me, like, you got it. Like, like, hey, you're doing a great job. Like, yeah. and, I, and I took that. Like, you know what I'm saying? People be having all type of negative shit to say. And I'd be like, bro, I don't care what y'all say. Right. Some people be like, you should let the, the sample alone. 
Hey, the man who made it told me yeah, I did an amazing fucking job. You know what I'm saying? So that's nothing nobody can tell me. And it's a hit. And, yeah, and then I, I didn't I didn't ch- chart all these playlists. Chart all these, you know what I'm saying? Did all these great... I just got an award from Limelight Media for First Class Men in Houston. You know what I mean? I didn't that's performed right. it at numerous of high schools. I performed this song at an elementary school. That's Kid you right. not. You know that's what I'm right. saying? So I let all that hate shit roll off. Yeah. I got the blessing from the king himself. Man, speaking of genuine, man, uh, I just seen, I'm a real big TGT fan. Facts. And I just seen, Me too. they just Me seem too. like they squashed their beef and they're going to make music. As a music. They need to bring me in, TGTP. Hey. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can do this. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious for you, what, what is like um, your top three favorite R&B artists? Uh, for sure, Chris Brown, hands down. Yeah. Tank. Yeah, Tank. Tank and, got it done. And really, I'm going to say this artist, and I don't, a lot of people don't even know him, but Sir. I, I listen sir? to Sir a lot. Everybody right? knows Sir. But every time I be like, Sir, they be like, who? And I be like, you don't know, uh, Sir, you sleep. You, you know what I mean? They just not music heads. You don't know, you you know, you know, know Rock. Sir you don't know Sir is. And his brother, D Smoke. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Facts. With them top three, like, definitely, like, my inspiration. Like, Now, let me ask you this. Who is top three bed making music artist? Uh, Trey Songs. For some reason, like, yeah. when I was growing up, girls wanted to do it to Trey Songs. Yeah. Yeah. That's breezy for sure because. You like the king. He he is the king. You know, that's my favorite artist of all time, period, right. hands down. And damn, I can't say that. <laughs> but Kelly. Kel's okay, for sure. still stepping in the Kel's for sure. Kel's definitely was yeah. Mr. Bedroom Boom for sure. No, nah, for sure. For sure. So um, you know, 2023 is, is is almost over with. 2024. What's the plans for Lil Pat? Do you got an album on the way? Do you got something yeah. new on the way? What we, look, what we got to drop, man. Uh, with a fire artist from Texas, big artist. I can't give y'all the exclusive yet. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? But yep. it's fire. I'm dropping at the top of the year. Is we gonna start off strong? You know what I mean? I'm showing a little bit of my rap side. You know what I mean? Showing, getting a little bit a little OTH pad in, so I can show my versatility. I'm um, working on my project. Got a bunch of fire features. Uh, I didn't work with Dallas on Bumpy Johnson. Damn. Facts. That's Facts. Crazy. We got some crazy heat going. I just worked with Sackboy KD, a Cash Money. We didn't drop the song. So I'm definitely doing a lot of collaborating right now. You know what I mean? Up. Doing some crazy work. Anybody want work, just hit me. You know, I'm, hey, before that time up, because if they got to go through y'all, <laughs> it's a little extra. Yeah, now nah, for real. We going to line it up, though. Man, so um, tell me just before you get out of here, bro, tell me like, what do you feel like is one of the best experiences you've had just on your journey? You know what I mean? This recent experience. Um, I was at the writing camp in Cali with 300. And I'm, I'm chilling. I'm sitting back smoking the wood, listening to music. I'm kicked back on the couch. And Irv Gotti literally walked right past me. And anybody know me, I love New York. I love that whole culture. So, I, you know, I work with Kevin Lyles and them. So to actually see him in person... It was just like different for me because I was in a relaxation moment. You know what I mean? I just made a fire song and I'm chilling, waiting to get back in the studio. And bro walk in kind of like, like normal. You know what I'm saying? We, we playing songs and it just was that, that acknowledgement that I'm, I'm doing a good job. You feel me? So definitely, definitely. That was like one of the highlight moments of this year for me because man, it just let me know that I'm, I'm, I'm where I wanted to be. No, nah, for sure. For sure. So, man, for anybody like, you know, want to support you and, and, and put on for, you know, LaPat and, and, and download and stream music, like give them your social media, man. Any shout outs that you got? Yeah, I want to shout out to my whole team. I want to shout out to 300. Shout out to BC Newton for always looking out for me. Shout out, I want to shout out to everybody that's always holding it down. My family, friends, my loved ones. But you can find me on all social medias, underscore L-A-H-P-A-T. That's Lil Pat. Please don't call me Lil Fat. Yeah, Lil Pat. <laughs> yeah. My real name Patrick, by the way. Patrick. <laughs> yeah. So you call me Lil Patrick. Lil Patrick. Whatever. You know what I mean? But on all social medias, I'm underscore Lil Pat. Uh, click the links in my bios. I always got that heat coming. I got my own community line if you want to connect with me directly. But I'm always on the gram. Tap in with me for sure. That's what's up, man. And hey, this is gonna be first for me. I know you gotta get to that sound check, man, yeah, but you know what it is, man. This is it. the best part. Lil Pat, you are a real life street star, man. Hold on, baby. Yes, sir.